Welcome to Successful Noom Kitchen with Jim John Marks, where we prepare recipes which encourage us to enjoy our meals more and set us up for long-term success with our relationship to the food we eat based on the principles of the Noom program. Today we're making jerk chicken pilaf. This has quite a few steps, but they're nicely coordinated and it makes a great meal, especially for a group. I've got one cup of rice here and two cups of water that I've warmed up uh, either in an electric skillet or in the microwave. And I get this nice big jar of saffron at one of those warehouse stores so it's not too expensive and you want to give that time to bloom. Uh, set your enameled uh, pot or your Dutch oven over low heat and at the same time that you're doing this you're also going to want to set your oven to 375 and go outside and uh, turn your grill on to its uh, lowest heat with either a large cast iron skillet or a griddle pan on it. And if you don't have a gas grill, you can do this over your uh, range top indoors. This is a sweet onion. You could use one of these or a white onion. I would avoid storage onions or red onions. They'll be too sharp for this dish. Uh, this is a fairly small dice. Uh, you want to make the pieces as small as you can so that they're not um, too different from the rice kernels when all said and done. Low heat, again, this color that you see is cumin powder. That's not uh, browning from sauteing. You don't want to brown the onion at all. You just want to weep out some water and soften it. Uh, when it's good and soft, you're going to add your rice. Again, keeping this over low heat, we're going to come back and stir this and move it around pretty frequently just to make sure nothing's burning or getting too much color on it. Um, raw rice, if it starts to burn, smells pretty bad. So you'll know right away if, you, if you've got your heat too high, but you shouldn't hear sizzling or anything like that. Uh, your grill now has been warming for quite some time, so uh, it's even though it's on low heat. So this is a good time to season our pan. I like to use uh, grapeseed oil for this. It's a good high heat oil so you don't get too much smoke. And then I come back with uh, a terry cloth towel. You can use paper towels, but then you're throwing them away every time you do this. Um, I can do this with these towels a, a bunch of times and when they get too nasty, I'll do a load of laundry with just these and you can get quite a few uh, runs out of them. I wouldn't use them for anything else, but uh, they work well for this and it, it reduces your waste. You will eventually have to replace them, but you get a lot of use out of them. When your rice is uh, nicely warmed and you can sort of smell a nutty smell along with your onions, uh, it's time to go ahead and add that liquid. As you can see, it's turned this gorgeous yellow color that we have here. That's from those uh, saffron fronds that you can see floating on the top. Uh, after uh, doing this, because I'm filming one-handed, I did come back and uh, add a little water to that Pyrex to wash out the last of that goodness. You will notice a difference if you don't use saffron in a pilaf. You'll just miss that specialness. Uh, bring that to a simmer and cover it. Make sure your oven's at 375 where you want it. Don't forget to turn off your burner. You'll have had to turn that up to get the, uh, the water up to a simmer by the time you pour it in and then uh, move this into your 375 degree oven. You're going to cook this essentially in two stages. Once you've shut the lid and you've shut the door, you don't want to open that again until you're ready to serve the rice. The first thing you're going to do is cook this for 30 minutes. And then at the end of those 30 minutes, all you're going to do is turn off the heat. You're not going to open the door of the oven. You're not going to lift the lid to check the rice. Let it sit for another 15 to 20 minutes before you open the door and lift the lid. Then it will be cooked through. These are five chicken thighs that I marinated overnight in uh, half a cup of salt, half a cup of sugar, and four tablespoons of jerk seasoning powder. Uh, I use hot water to melt the salt and the sugar and warm up the spices. Then I use ice to take all the heat back out of that. Uh, you then add your meat and fill the container so that the pieces are completely covered and then I keep that in the fridge for at least 24 hours. Um, then you don't really need to paint anything onto these as you're cooking to make them spicy. Uh, the, the warm spices that were in that marinade have, have fully penetrated this meat. Be sure to cook skin side down and get as much contact with that pan as you can with the skin. We want to render all the fat out of that that we can and we want our skin to be nice and crispy. Once you've got all your pieces on there, you're not going to want to try to move them around or flip them. We're going to leave these skin side down almost the entire time they're cooking. And yes, you can see a lot of steam here. And if the sound was on, you would hear a lot of sizzling. That's because this pan has been preheating for a long time. But because we're on low heat, that settles down very quickly. 
and it'll take about as long as the rice takes to cook this chicken with this method. This is some orange juice that I've strained all the pulp out of. And uh, because we've got a fair bit of spice in here, we just want a little bit of sweetness. Uh, we're gonna do little doses like this more than once uh, while this meat slowly cooks. When that's had time, you're gonna come back uh, with a basting brush. I have one with nice silicone bristles so that it doesn't burn. When working with hot things, you can see all that schmaltz that's rendered off there from the skin uh, and the fat. That's also got some of the orange juice in it as well. So we're gonna help that uh, glaze the meat. Uh, and again, we're gonna just keep doing this in, in batches. I probably do this about a half dozen times. When your rice has cooked for 30 minutes and then rested for 15 to 20 minutes, you're ready to dish that out. Uh, as you can see, all the water has cooked through. The rice is nice and fluffy. I like a spaghetti rake for this. Uh, it prevents the rice from breaking too much or getting gummy when you're dishing it out. You don't really wanna stir it too much if you can help it. I do come back with a spoon and get all that delicious brownness off the bottom of the pan. That's not burnt. That's um, a natural thing that happens when rice cooks and it's delicious. You do wanna keep that. This is frozen vegetables that have been completely thawed, so they're room temperature, and there's enough heat in that rice to warm those through. I did flip the chicken to the meat side down just for the last five minutes or so, just to make sure that side had a little color and was cooked through. Uh, although these have been on for so long, that really was not a risk. And make sure when you're plating them out, you keep them skin side up. If you put them skin side down, you'll lose all that crispiness because it'll steam through. Thank you for watching this episode of Successful Noom Kitchen with Jim John Marks. If you have questions about this episode, please comment and we will do our best to address your concerns. If you enjoyed this video, please consider clicking the thumbs up. And if you are interested in all our videos, please subscribe. All music in these episodes are my own compositions, available from my band camp location, the URL for which is on the screen and in the channel info. Please note I am not associated with Noom Incorporated in any way, and all content is entirely my responsibility.